posted on the website up until the question, the Q and A at the end, and then we um, we we don't uh, record that part. And um, we ask you to mute your mute yourselves now. And when we get to the Q and A, um, we we this is mostly broad strokes rather than very detailed questions about your specific proposal, um, which we'll talk about a little bit further along. So I'm going to share my screen, and. Um, look at a few points. Okay. So can everybody see what we're looking at here? Oh, it's not quite um not quite yes. full screen. It's not full screen, it. but we can see it. <laughs> oh, here we go. Sorry. Um <clears throat> so here we are, the 2024 convention, San Antonio, August 1st through 4th, 2024. And here's the theme, and this is where we are. So what we're going to look at today, we're going to um do some introductions at the purpose of the session, look at some data and guidelines and specific information that might be helpful, and then talk to Alberto about his artistic vision um, as program chair, look at some additional tips and insights, and then Millie is going to guide us through the application process. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, I'm Executive Director Jenny Clark. Millie Harrod is with us, the Membership Manager and Noah Klein, who is our communications manager, is here from the staff, and assistant, assistant Vice President Jennifer Grimm is here as well. And she'll be able to share some, um, some insights from when she was a program chair. And if Alberto doesn't want to do it that way this year, he'll let us know. So, um, so first, yeah, so um, Alberto, would you like to um, give us a wave so we can see you or we'll say hello? And Sarah Shin is the I am great. Here. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> Excellent. Sarah Shin is the assistant program chair. Let's say hi, Sarah. Hello. Hi, everyone. Wonderful. And Alberto will speak about his vision uh, for the convention a little later. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think we've dealt with that. So here's some here's some interesting data. So in 2022, that's when we were in, in Chicago, we received 400 proposals from 256 applicants and 198 were selected. <clears throat> Similarly, in 2023 in Phoenix, we received 413 proposals from 274 members, 218 were selected. So they're both around 50% um, of what was submitted uh, was um, accepted. And this is an important um, point, is that for many sessions, only a portion of what was submitted was um, ultimately programmed into the convention. <clears throat> so Alberto will talk a little bit more about that, but um, you might submit a whole program, but it might be that um, a selection of the material that you submit might be what's finally um, selected. So the number of sessions that we do is based on how much space we have at the convention location. So sometimes um, people have said to me, well, why don't you just you know, schedule everything? Well, unfortunately, we only have um, a certain number of rooms. In fact, we have a lot more rooms than most of the music conferences around um, because we have so many performances and workshops and, and, um, and sessions of all different kinds. Um, but but it's the four walls that sort of dictate a lot about um, what we can do during the four days. <clears throat> the deadline for submissions is Monday, October 2nd, 11.59 Central Time. And um, originally we said it was October 1st, but that's a Sunday. Um, and it's better that it's a Monday in case you do have any uh, difficulties submitting your proposals. But um, the staff is not around on the weekend, so I really strongly recommend um, it's only two and a half weeks away that you do your proposals as early as possible. 
All proposals are submitted through the um, member portal on the NFA website. And um, late submissions will not be accepted, so you definitely have to get them in by the end of that um, Monday. All the guidelines are on our website. And it's, NFA membership is required to submit a proposal, so you need to become a member or renew your membership. And if you have any difficulty, you can contact Millie, who's on with us today, who'll help you navigate the membership um, process. And, and check it out because we have uh, several levels of membership, especially students, lower income, and full membership. So make sure if you qualify for the lower income um, rate that you do take advantage of that. <clears throat> so the focus of your proposal may be performances, workshops, panels, or lectures. That's broken down a little bit, which we'll see further along. <clears throat> the Flute Ensemble Festival activities are a separate application process, and the deadline for that is November 15th. And a flute ensemble in NFA's world is five flutes or more in order to be considered a flute ensemble. Here's some nitty gritty information before we get to the interesting stuff. Um, each NFA member may submit up to three proposals, um, but they must each be in a different category and the categories are shown below. NFA committees may submit up to five proposals. So the categories are solo performance that can be alone or with um, another instrument like keyboard, electronics, or per uh, percussion. Um, basically, an instrument played by one musician, other than they, in addition to the flutist. Chamber performance is basically that between that and the flute choir. But sometimes special performances might be included in that um, category. And Alberta might have some thoughts about that. But that could be a woodwind quintet, or it could be a mixed instrument ensemble, um, a sort of chamber music ensemble, or it, it, it could be like a dancer and a flutist. Or it's, if you think you have something kind of special that doesn't fit, um, that can be a good place to put it in if it's a performance. Um, <clears throat> workshop, uh, lecture, lecture recital, sort of combo of a few different things, or a panel where you have a moderator and um, guest speakers. Now we get to the interesting stuff. I'm going to pass the not pass the non mute to Albert, Al, Alberto. I'm sorry, there's a mistake in there. Um, <clears throat> to introduce the themes and focus of the of the convention. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm just so thrilled to have so many people interested in this process. Um, we want you to know that we are committed to transparency and fairness and inclusivity. We want as many of you uh, to come and be part of this. Um, in order to do that, um, but at the same time to maintain a certain level of unit in the convention, uh, we decided to have themes. Now, in the past, some conventions are with no themes. Uh, I always like the themes, but I also find that when having one can be limiting because, you know, if you want to play and if your, your material doesn't match that, you might be in, in disadvantage. So what we are doing is creating three different themes that are as open and wide as we could come up with. Uh, and probably the most important one is the first one, cultural diversity. And I wanna explain what we mean by that. Um, in my many years of career and traveling and performing and teaching around many, many different countries, I have always been amazed at the quality of performers, composers and repertoire. But I'm also have been surprised how little uh, of some of the repertoire is known um, by the mainstream flute sometimes. And I wanted to bring awareness to that. So when, when I talk about corners of the flute, I'm referring to our flute. Um, many of you know me, I am an avid collector of flute. I have one of the largest flute collections in the world. 
Uh, but we are not doing that this time. As much as I love it, what we are doing is our flute. What is the cultural diversity of our flute? From bossa nova in Brazil to avant-garde music and electronics and baroque performance pra practice, our flute. And so I want to open up that. That's the, the corners of our flute. Uh, for that, we are looking for people from the Middle East, and we have some really amazing initiatives there from the Eastern Europe, from Latin America, as well as Asia, uh, and of course, everything else. And so that's what we mean. Um, I, I, As I said, I'm very interested in the flute as a global instrument uh, and the many, many other flutes of our culture and around the world. But these conventions will celebrate our flute and the huge variety of repertoire and styles that we do with our transverse flute from, you know, from uh, where we, we play. Uh, so that was one. The second one is the arts. Um, I have also been just really stunned at the creativity and beauty that some people um, have shown in terms of including from poetry to dance to uh, electronics and visuals to the flute repertoire. And I wanted to celebrate that as well. Bring people that sometimes uh, don't feel that they fit into this flute recital culture um, by saying, no, you are welcome. We want your creativity and your um, incredible new ideas about how the flute can be integrated to the other arts. In um, nature, it's partially a, a historical thing. The flute has always been from the earliest part of the repertoire um, to contemporary music related to nature, the celebration, the contemplation of nature. And in many cases, and I think today it's very relevant, uh, the, the observation of how we relate with nature. Um, so, you know, I wanna see how flutists and composers are thinking about our connection with nature. And so it's quite wide, it's very ample, um, but you know that's what we are trying to do. Now, let me uh, do something very important before. Uh, I wanna make sure that if your proposal doesn't match any of these three main pillars, it's not that critical. We want to offer uh, you know, the, uh, this kind of thematic program, but if you have a different idea, please don't feel that you shouldn't present it to us. Um, quite the contrary. We, we believe the convention is a place of as wide as possible. We are just putting these three themes as a way of kind of giving some order, okay? So don't be discouraged if you don't have one of these three themes in your music. Now, um, the next uh, uh, screen is um, we also, in addition to these three themes, we decided that we wanted to have this kind of a specific programs uh, spread throughout the, the convention with things that are related to these main three themes. So we decided to open um, these recitals to anybody who wants to be part of this. So in the case of George Cram, uh, he died last year and, had, and wrote some extraordinary music for flute. We all know Voice of the Whale, but the idol for the Misbegotten, 11 Echoes of Autumn, and many others were so beautifully written for the flute that I wanted to, he was a, a friend of mine, and I want to honor his memory and his contribution to the flute repertoire. And uh, so we are inviting um, anybody who wants to play some of his wonderful music to come up with a proposal. And the same is true with the next one, Romantic Nature. So we want to open the space for pieces like On the Sonata or any of the other great romantic and early romantic or even classical pieces that were inspired by nature. So, you know, we just call it romantic, but it's all, you know, classical repertoire all the way to, you know, the romantic and post-romantic repertoire inspired by nature. And the same idea with contemporary nature, uh, it doesn't have to be flute necessarily, and flute alone or flute and piano. There are wonderful pieces from, uh, I know one that I love is called this, uh, The Lark in the Morning. Uh, no, the, sorry, The Song of the Lark uh, by a Chinese American composer for flute and harp, an absolute jewel of peace. So if you have any ideas about that, anything inspired by nature, uh, preservation, the birds, anything, 
Uh, we are landscape. We are very interested. Uh, the New Americans is something that is very close to my heart, and I know every immigrant in this country, like myself, um, in that there are some extraordinary composers that came here as immigrants. And the reason I want to do this is because I think way too often uh, immigrants are portrayed in a negative manner. And I want to show that we are a country of immigrants and there are some extraordinary contributions to the art, to music and everything else. And I want to celebrate that by looking for composers. I'm thinking about Samuel Zimmern, Efraim Amaya, Reza Valley, and many, many, many more composers that came here and have enriched our culture and our musical life with their genius. Um, so we are looking for repertory. If you have ideas, if you have proposals, please. Uh, Fruit and the Arts is exactly the same than the theme. We are looking for connect, connected work between flutes and any of the art, dance, poetry, um, graphic design, computers, anything that is an artistic discipline that is integrated to the flute, we want it. Um, Vanguardia is, um, is a program that is going to be uh, celebrating the just stunning amount of great repertoire that is coming from Latin America. It's truly amazing. Um, and so if you have pieces from the last, you know, 50 years of Latin American music, uh, please bring it to us. Uh, we want uh, flute music. We don't want transcriptions. We don't want, uh, you know, mariachi music. We want the original music for the flute because the wealth is stunning, really stunning. And I would love that all our uh, people coming to the convention are exposed to these pieces. So those are the pre-canned, pre-defined recitals, and they're open. So you know, if you want to participate in any of those, great. If you want to present something more general, uh, like a separate entity as well, you are welcome, or unrelated thing. So pretty much everybody is welcome. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Alberto. And, and yes. I'd just like to point out that if you if you submit to one of these predefined recitals, that counts as one proposal. So you have two others that you can submit as well. Or you could just submit for one of these if, if that's what you um, are interested in doing. So um the next section is really looking at some of the some of the um insights from previous program chairs about their experience in evaluating um, the material that comes in. And um, I'd like to invite Jennifer Grimm to share some of the insights from her experience as program chair. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you. Hope you can hear me OK. Um, so I have, um, so I was the program chair for the 2020 convention, um, which got converted to the 2021 convention. So I've been a part of this process multiple times for one event um, in different forms. And we actually started these sessions um, in 2020 during the summer series. Um, I did a PowerPoint presentation during the summer series just to, again, give some transparency to this process so everyone understands, you know, all of the different things that have to go into play to decide who gets selected. And so um, I'll give you ideas and tips that I received that I learned from the process of my own convention. But of course, Alberto's vision is his unique vision and he may do things differently. But um, but some of these ideas, I think, will just help him decide to accept your proposal. So, you know, there's different kinds of proposals. Some of proposals are performance based and some are non performance based. So for the proposals that are not performance based, um, some good guidelines is, um, you know, you always have to have a piece of, of supplemental documentation um, to to add to your proposal so that we understand what your vision is. And so if you're going to do a workshop or a panel discussion um, or even a lecture, it's really important that we have some sort of document with an outline of what you're planning on doing. So um, if you're doing a workshop, have a have a PDF of an outline of what your session looks like with, with really clear objectives. You know, if we have if you put together a grant proposal, you'll have to put down your purpose, your objectives, your outcomes, all of those things. The more information that you're able to give Alberto, the more confident he will be in being able to accept your idea. So 
Make sure your outline has all of the ideas you want to present. Um, include bios of every participant of your panel discussion or your workshop. Um, and, and this is really important for me. I thought it was really important that if your topic is not flute related for you to make sure you include an expert in the field. So we have, you know, lots of interests that are not specifically flute, but in order to, for us to feel confident in presenting this at a flute convention with, you know, a lot of stakes, a lot of people watching, we want to make sure that um, we have someone who really is an expert in the field. And, you know, this could be someone from the local area in San Antonio, you can do some research to find someone who um, is who works in this area, whether it's you know about special education or or anything like that but i would do a little bit of work to 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 i guess bolster your proposal so that you have um expert opinions in addition to the flutists on your panel so there's just some ideas for um non-performance related proposals you know making sure you have a clear outline as disc as descriptive as you can possibly be um with what your event is and with all of the members intact. Um, and now for performance proposals, um, you know, again, this is also going to be very specific to each program chair, but it was really helpful for me if I got a lot of clear information. And now the process might have, you know, maybe the process has changed a little bit since I um, did my, my time um, in 2020, but when you would submit your audio file um, make sure it's very clearly marked that what the audio file is sometimes i remember receiving audio files that just had um you know audio file one and i didn't have a name and then when you're looking at literally 500 and in, in case i had 600 proposals this audio file one i was like i have no idea what this is and then you get lost and then it takes forever to figure out so be as clear as possible if you're having an audio file your name the piece just be as transparent as possible to help make it easier for us you don't want us to get frustrated and be like i don't know what this is and then for us to decide not to put it on right so as clear as you can make the process as clear as you can label things um, so it's really important that you label the files as much as you can. Um, if you are submitting a proposal for a full recital um, with multiple performers, um, make sure that all of that information is indicated because sometimes the proposal, the person who's submitting the proposal is one person and there'll be a recital, but with like five or six people, um, make sure that we have all the information of all of the participants as well as audio files from all of the participants. So not just the one file from the proposer submitting the entire recital. I think that's also very important. And, you know, it's really important for the for us to feel confident in the quality of the presentations. And so please, you know, if you can possibly record your piece, have a recent recording of your piece, it's really important that we hear that piece that you're proposing um, as opposed to something that's not related to the piece that you're proposing. Um, and I know there'll be cases where people will wanna perform a world premiere. Um, and in those cases, and like Alberto may have a different idea about this, but for what helped me is um, I would ask that, you know, say you want, I'm going to perform a world premiere of piece by composer X, who has never written for flute before. This is be her first flute piece ever, but this person is a well recognized composer and I'm working with her and we're going to get this piece out. Um, so I would love to have a recording of you performing so I know what you sound like I know what your artistry is like so I can feel confident in how you would deliver this piece. And then I would love to hear a recording of composer X music, so I have an idea of what to expect, so if i'm going to put this piece on a recital with other pieces, I need to make sure it fits in the theme it fits programmatically things like that, so that really helped me. Um, to have people who would submit recordings knowing that they didn't have the actual piece because it wasn't written yet, but they gave me another recording of that composer's music so I understood the style and helped me fit them in and helped me trust that this piece was going to be a really great fit for this program. 
So for me, those are things that were really helpful. Um, and then yes, when you do submit your performance proposals, yeah, I know it might be very difficult to record your piece that you're planning on playing eight months from now, but it really helps us if you have a recording of this specific piece and not something else. Um, and you know, I don't know if if Alberto will will feel comfortable or not or this, but you know, oftentimes people will submit a recording of themselves playing something. If you cannot submit a piece of if you cannot submit a recording of that specific piece, please try to submit something that's close to it. You know, a performance of you playing Bach when you really want to play Ian Clark doesn't give us as much information. So, you know, as much as you can give us some um, some leeway so that we feel really confident in um, selecting your piece and fitting it on a, a concert. Because oftentimes, like Jenny said, we'll pick one piece out of your proposal. We'll put this piece here. We may put this piece on this concert. We may put these things together. And so we want it to all fit um, with the timings and everything and also just fit with the program. So those things really helped me in feeling comfortable picking everyone's projects. Um, the next thing is be really truthful with the length of the pieces that you say you are proposing. Um, very often we guesstimate and we say a piece is seven minutes, but it's really nine minutes. And then you introduce the piece beforehand and then we get in trouble. So it really helps us to be as accurate as possible with the timings of the pieces that you are submitting. I think that's very, very important. Um, that's a lot of what I remember wanting to hear and, and, and what helped me. Um, but those are just some ideas that I had from my experience. So thanks. I'll pass it back to Jenny. Wonderful. Thanks, Jen. That's really, really, really helpful. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to scan through a few other things. I said there might be some duplicates, and if there are, I'll skip those. But um, so you know, the, the most important thing I've heard is like clearly state in the first sentence what it is you want to do. And I know um, as having been a, um, a grant maker in the past and reading lots of grant applications and being on panels and things, sometimes you'd sit there and say, what is this about? You know, so you really want to make sure it, everything that the, the person reading it knows from the get-go what what it is that you want to do might sound obvious but it doesn't always uh, happen that way um yeah detail is really important um i think that will help um the reviewers really uh, a lot to have everything fleshed out in detail um and explain what is unique and special about your idea and how it fits with the theme it, and it, and you know as as i've already said it, it doesn't fit with the theme that's okay um, and remember, as we said, that it could be stitched together with other material. Um, <clears throat> information about music that is not common in the repertoire can be helpful. Um, information about the composer and the piece, any context. So if supposing the piece was confirmed to, to memorate a particular event, like let's say 9-11, <clears throat> Um, that would be useful information um, for the reviewers to, to have if it was created for a particular um, something that really that went on at that time. Um, <clears throat> uh, we talked about composers and we talked about the work sample. And it really is very important that you submit, um, you know, the best sample that you that you can. And that's another reason to start, um, you know, start right away. Uh, if your project has technical requirements, we really need to know those because we have to know how it fits with the technical capacity that we have. And um, the way it works at the convention is that we have certain rooms that are allocated um, to have more tech available. And so we really know how want to know how that fits with the capacity that we have and the equipment that we can provide or what you can provide. And so that's very important information. <clears throat> These are just a few um, strategies. I've already said this several times, start early um, to give yourself the chance to make the strongest submission that you can. Um, prepare a list of all the different materials before you start and have everything ready to upload. Um, start working with your collaborators early so that you can get their bios and everybody's very busy. So, you know, you want to give people plenty of time to get you what you need. And ask a colleague or a friend to read through your description for um, clarity and detail. 
and, and just ask them if they have any questions about what this is about and just, just see what their response is. So proposals will be reviewed by um, by the program chair Alberto, and he'd like to tell you a little bit more about the collaborative process that he's bringing into that um, to the reviewing part of it. I just remember I had two more tips. Can I just I just forgot these two tips. These two tips, which I think are might be helpful, um, and it's it's about broadening your scope. So I remember I received um, a lot of very narrowly focused like panel and non-performance programs, uh, proposals where it would be for a very small audience, a very important topic, but, but for a very small audience. And it was hard to fit that in because we only have so many limited spaces. So if you have a topic, try to remember the reach that you're wanting to give um, the, as broad of a reach as possible so that it can impact as many people as possible is gonna be preferred. And in a similar vein, um, if you are one person and you want to present a multi-movement 40-minute piece, that's really hard to program on a recital for one person. And so shorter, shorter movements and shorter pieces are going to be more easily malleable and be able to fit into proposals than multi long, long, long multi-movement works. So those are my last two tips. Thanks. And uh, one other um, thought that had come my way was about the, the panels that Sometimes what can be really effective if, is if you have a moderator and three panelists. Um, and, and that's something that um, it's not a strict rule or anything. It's not a requirement, but it might be a suggestion to think about so that each person can give an in-depth um, contribution to the panel. And that sort of goes along with what um, Jen is saying about um, the sort of depth and breadth of, of what a, um, a panel could look like. So now I'm going to hand it back to um, Alberto to talk about Alberto to talk about the process of reviewing. Great, thank you. Uh, such great advice, both Jenny and Jennifer. It's so valuable. Um, and Jennifer, when you talk about the the idea of premieres, I, I it's exactly what I I hope to do. So please, for anybody who's thinking about that, listen carefully what Jennifer said. Um, it is vital to us to have as much information as we can. So if the piece is not available, some relevant repertoire by the composer, and of course you're playing. Uh, one thing I did when, when I started this job, I contacted a lot of the previous uh, uh, program chairs, including Jennifer and many, many others, and I asked for their advice. And one thing that people said about this process was that sometimes people that are very good players Think that that is enough, and they the proposal is lacking, uh, you know, a, a reasoning uh, uh, for why we should bring them. Um, and and uh, so make sure that you invest. Obviously, everybody who's here is already taking the right step and being informed and committed to a good proposal. But you have to understand from our point of view is that we are going to hear a lot of really good players, and we're going to see hundreds of really good proposals. Um, so that's that's one thing. And talking about that, I wanted to mention that um, the way we are working on this is um, I have a, a group of people that I have I know very well uh, that are going to help me with this process. That are going to help Sarah and I with this process, the preliminary process of getting to uh, get a sense of what are the strongest proposals and what are the most artistically high level proposals as well. Um, none of these people that are going to be evaluating the proposals are part of this convention. Um, many of these people are some of my old friends that are, many of them are semi-retired, uh, very, very well-known people that I know everybody trusts, but I want to assure you that there is no conflict of interest. We were ex very specific. So if somebody in our work committee is evaluating, performing things, they can't uh, uh, propose a, a, a performing on their own. Uh, they, however, can participate on lectures or panels, etc. So we are looking for a very transparent, uh, free of um, you know bias uh, process. Um, ultimately, by when when that initial process has come to an, an end, um, Sarah and I are going to have 
we're going to review everything again, but this time with a little bit of the guidance of our uh, colleagues uh, and esteemed flutists that would give us their insight. So that also help us to make sure that we are not missing anything, that we are not being biased, etc. Uh, but ultimately, uh, the final decision is mine. And uh, so, you know, we'll try our best to be as inclusive as we can, but it's part of the kind of dreaded part of this job is that eventually you have to, uh, you are going to have to reach that point. But please know that I am listening to a lot of people that we all admire and respect for their advice. And finally, my decision is going to be based on, with their help on what I think is best for the audience and for the convention itself. Uh, one thing that I wanted to show you is that we developed this little questionnaire for the people that are not help us uh, in an effort to be as objective and transparent as we can. So, you know, it has the name of the applicant, the title, what kind of, uh, what category is a performance, a lecture, a workshop, class, other. Um, and then does it fit with the themes of the convention uh, of these three things, this pillar that we talk or not? If it doesn't, that's fine. We just, they have to mark it other. In the back, we have a little bit of a scale of evaluating quality and performing quality, strictly performing quality and uh, one to five, five being the highest. And we are gonna review very careful that thing twice and three times even uh, to make sure that we are all in the same page as we know that's a subjective area so we are going to try to be as uh, ample with our opinions as possible uh, on this next uh, category is uh, the proposal quality we're talking about uh content of the lectures the, how uh, how relevant they are for us the large number of people how specific they are etc so that is going to be evaluated as well and we are going to define that we're going to come back and revisit that um, we also have a check here of uh, all the predefined programs. So the persons that are helping us would check uh, if one of these programs is applying uh, or one of these persons are applying to that specific program. Um, and, and finally, their advice or their comments uh, and suggestions. So, but with that, we are uh, allowing more opinions to be heard. Again, at the end, it comes to me uh, through Sarah, but this committee, I think, help us to offer the widest uh, uh, listening that we possibly can. Um, I want to do one more thing, Jenny. It's about the, the, the panels. I want to emphasize uh, what uh, Jenny said. Uh, it's my experience uh, sitting and uh, Jennifer and I sat in a wonderful panel in Phoenix, but it is my experience that sometimes in the in the effort of bringing as many voices as possible, um, then you don't hear much from anybody there. Uh, and you know, it's like um, I I think my suggestion would be uh, think about content and depth in your panel proposals, um, rather than the panel itself being super representative, uh, which of course we want that too. But, you know, sometimes I, I, I'm left with a sense that I was in this wonderful buffet, but I didn't get my solid dish. And uh, mm -hmm. so think about that. I think, and that might be different from everybody, but I think that uh, about three people per panel is enough to provide content variety uh, but also that. So, you know, that's one, one little uh, tip that I have for people uh, applying for those. Oh, and one last thing, you know, there is also these combined things. Uh, like, for instance, uh, I just heard somebody who was talking about having a lecture workshop. So that's possible too, you know, so lecture recital, lecture workshop. So put it there and, and the one that is the closest to what you think uh, you uh, your proposal is, uh, and then make a little note to us, saying, you know, I'm also thinking about a workshop on these, or put in the title, lecture workshop or lecture recital. Okay, so guide us on what you want to do. All right, thank you. Perfect, thank you, Roberto. Um, so yeah, so we're going to move to the sort of practical aspects of submitting a proposal. Uh, we have, 
that some tools on our website, we have PDF guide to the application process, the online application process, and a video guide uh, that, that Millie prepared as well. So now I'm gonna hand over to Millie and um, she'll guide us through the rest of the process. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and then Millie will start sharing hers. Hello everyone. I'm gonna share my screen here. Okay, so first thing, of course, we're going to do is just go to our website. Um, if you go, if you hover over a convention, call for proposals, you will have all of this information that we went through today. But if you want to read over it, I highly suggest you do that before you start doing anything. <laughs> um, just think through all of the requirements and all the things that you have to have prepared. Um, so, and then here's um, the video and then um, the PDF it, information is here. My information is on this page. Um, if you have any technical difficulties, and I'll say this again, um, please feel free to email me. So, and also please do it as um, earlier the better. Um, I'm happy to help you. Um, I do, we do have extended hours. We, me, have extended hours on October 2nd, um, but I really would like to not stay up till like midnight. So I will do it, but I, but if it is what it is, but um, if you could do it early and get your questions to me early, that I would really, really appreciate it. Okay, so um, first thing we're gonna do is just log in to our membership portal. So if you click log in up here, um, my information is already pre-filled in. So now I'm logged in, welcome Millie. So we're gonna hit profile. Oh, profile. And if you wanna check your membership status um, under, this already came up for me, but if you hover over your name and you click my info, you'll get this page. Um, and under membership, it says uh, if you're active or not active, just so you know where that is. Um, so again, you must be an active member for the application to show up. Um, I don't, I believe that the application won't show up at all, at all if you are not a member. So we're going to click here in the middle to events, then 2024 convention proposals, click again, and then once again, 2024 convention proposals, and this will take you to the application. Again, this is the same um, explanation with all the materials and things that you need that's on our website, but it's just on the actual application. Um, so we're going to keep scrolling and this is where we get to the application. So we're going to fill out a test one here. So, um, your group name, I'm going to put Millie's group. Okay. I'm going to put my first name. If you would like, please add your pronouns. And make sure that you are putting the email that you want um, to be, uh, once once the proposal acceptances go out, we will be sending it to, to this email. So please make sure that you fill out a good email. So, but my personal one. Okay. My phone number. Okay, if you are submitting on behalf of a committee, feel free to write the committee name here. Um, please put, now we get to the inf event information. So your session title, um, your description. So um, you might wanna hover over these little blue boxes, there's some additional information to remind you 
of the specific details that we need. So for example, um, this needs to be 200 words because that is what is allowed for our program book. Um, so make sure you, you have 200 words. I'm just gonna put the test. Um, then please select what category um, yours falls under. So I'm gonna put solo performance. Um, and then what, um, um, I guess that would also be categories, um, yours falls under, and I think you can select multiple. So I'm going to put DEI and Piccolo. So just check all the ones that you think, um, apply. And then if you have other, you can, there's an additional field. Um, so these are some, uh, newer questions, um, that are helpful for us when planning out this convention. So um, as you saw, we did do uh, virtual um, um, presentations and performances on our Facebook page this year um, that we're having live. So um, if you want to be um, included in that, there's no guarantee. Um, please select if you want to have, um, if you want to be part of the virtual convention. Um, okay. So, and with that, um, if you're actually just kidding. So if your session has a PowerPoint presentation, are you willing to share that PDF, um, with us, um, just to make it a little bit, we're trying to do some things at the convention that are a little bit more inclusive. So having additional materials, um, for people I think are, are going to be helpful. So, Along with that, um, we have this new question this year. How does your proposal align with NFA's statement to committee statement of commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion? You can actually find that on um, our website. So if you click a, um, about mission and vision um, and you scroll down, this is our official statement, uh, DEI statement. So um, if you want to share your thoughts, I think that's really important for us um, in fulfilling this mission. So it's not a required question, but please feel free to share your thoughts on how your proposal can help our mission. So, and then um, again, we have this new question where um, if your piece that you want to perform is part of one of these um, predetermined recitals, please check the one that um, applies to you. Um, and then please put the entire length of your proposed session. And I know we talked about this, but it's really critical that we know how long your uh, setup and teardown timing is, um, especially if you have um, electronics or percussion or things like that, because we need to build in all of that time when building out the full um, convention timeline. Um, so that's really helpful for us to know. Um, and if you have your ensemble name, that goes there. Um, so then we have your bio. So again, hover here. Um, bios are to be 300 characters. I know that's not a lot, but we have hundreds and hundreds of pages worth of bios because we have a lot of people participate at our convention. And so that's why we have that very strict character limit. So, and then we have some other like suggestions on how to, um, you know, abbreviations and things that can help you. Um, so please submit a short bio um, and, you know, your other people as well, if you have other people um, participating. So, and their bios, and I think that's it. So after we're done, we're gonna hit preview. And one thing that I'm also gonna mention is, I believe that there's no way you can actually like save and go back and edit. So I would work on this in a Google doc or a Word document, um, filling out your, your answers and all your things. And then when you are 100% are ready to submit, I would then go into the form and actually submit. That would be my suggestion. So, okay, we're gonna hit preview and then 
We're gonna look through, we're gonna hit, the, we're gonna get this preview page. Everything looks to be good. So we're gonna hit save and that's gonna submit your proposal. So, yep, and we're gonna go home. So that's good. So I think we probably, yep, I think I got an email. You're not done yet. You have two more, <laughs> two more steps. Okay, so I got a confirmation email. Um, so in this email, you will have, you have your proposal number, which is very important. Um, so the next two steps is, um, we're gonna take that proposal number. And if you have any um, supplementary material, so your recordings, programs, uh, prog um, your order of your program or anything that you wanna add, um, you need to upload it through Box and the link is right here in the email. So Box is just like Dropbox or Google Drive, same thing. Uh, so put your email address and then your the convention proposal number goes here. And you can upload any file that you could, you know, again, typically upload to Dropbox. So PDF, Word Docs, um, MP4s. Um, I did get a question, you know, if you do have YouTube links, um, I would put your YouTube links like in a PDF and like title it and make it very clear like what it is um, and then submit that PDF through this form. We wanna get everything through this form so it's all in one place. And so that's step two. So after you're done, you're good. Um, and then the last step is we're gonna go back to our portal and we're gonna fill out the convention works form. So this is only if you are intending to perform a piece. So if you're doing a panel, you do not need to fill out this form. So we're gonna go to events, proposal works, and then proposal works again. So basically this form is to fill out all of the nitty gritty details about the pieces that you are wanting to perform. So please fill out um, one form, yeah, one form for every piece that you want to perform. Um, and so let me, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this really quickly and just put test and I will get, in the past, it hasn't been this way, but you this this year you will get a confirmation email once you submit this form. So actually, let's go through it. So here, um, put your proposal number. So one one two five five. That's my proposal number. Two five five. Okay, um, and that's how we're gonna link all of these things together with that number. So your title of your work, your composer um, name, um, the dates of your composers, uh, who it's arranged by if there's an arrangement, um, if it's a world premiere. Um, again, the very specific timing of the work. Um, and also, again, if you're gonna if you have it recorded, you know, some people some Mozarts take longer than others, some, some Mozarts takes longer than others. So whatever you know, you what you are intending to perform, how long it's going to be, that's a very critical, because um, we have back to back to back things if you know, you've know you ever attended to a convention. So we need to make sure that's accurate. So your ensemble name, your performers for that piece, um, and then um, please put the composer's full name and last name again, this is better. This is just helpful for us in pulling the data. So I'm just gonna put test again. Um, the publisher. Um, again, if it's in print, um, list all the movements um, that you will be performing. That's also very helpful. And then your description. So we're going to hit preview again. So it looks like I have everything filled in. And we're going to save. Okay, so should have gotten an email. Yep. And this is just my confirmation email saying that I got that in. So I know that was kind of 
I went through that quickly. <laughs> um, but does anybody have any questions? Yes, Judy. Oh, yeah. Judy and then Rachel. <laughs> oh, do you know my daughter? Oh, Rachel. Oh. No, I was saying Rachel Wolf also, my, also my raised her. daughter's daughter, and everybody's always like. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> um, I have two questions. One is that um, I'm trying for a solo piece that fits into one of your prearranged recitals. Um, and it, I, I have a recording of it. Actually, I have three questions. And that I don't have necessarily the recording of the whole thing. It's only two short movements. It's about a total of seven minutes. Do I need to submit both movements or just one? Or do you want the whole thing? And second of all, the recording I have is um, literally from Wild Acres. And the pianist that Wild Acres is not necessarily the pianist who I would be performing with at the convention if I was accepted. So do I list his bio or since it would be a flute and piano piece? How do I go about that? And third, this is an unpublished work that was published previously around 1900, but is no longer in print. So how do I deal with that? Um, as for the first part, uh, I would say provide as much as you can. Most of the, the, the idea for us is to uh, evaluate the, the quality of the piece and, and most importantly, can we fit it in a program? And and so, you know, do as much as you can and give us as much material as you can. Um, mm -hmm. As for the pianist part, uh, I won't worry about that because uh, Jennifer, maybe you can add to that, but uh, Jenny, um, I, I don't think that's critical because a lot of the recordings are not going to be by the performer. So we are not judging those people yeah i would agree i think you need if if you know your the pianist is going to be uh part of your proposal then that's the person whose bio you would put not the one that's on the recording but i would be i don't know um i haven't been in a convention recently but i thought you provide pianists at the convention oh so what, well that we don't want to get into that right now um so if you if but if Person. If that's the case, then um, that I think that's not really part of the proposal process. Okay, okay. So I'll, I'll deal with that so, later. Um, yeah. What about the unpublished situation? Is that a problem? That's, that's not would, a problem, is it? Yeah, I would just, since it's not currently published, that means it's not currently available. So I would say unpublished. Okay, okay. All right, thank you very much. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, I have two questions. Um, the first one is if we're working on a commission that is going to be performed soon, but is not going to be something that we can, you know, uh, record as a duo or what have you prior to the October 1st deadline, is it okay to submit as part of our supplemental a MIDI recording of the piece and a score of the piece as well as a representation of the perform the performers? Yeah, uh, it's what uh, Jennifer said before. Provide as much information as you can. Midis are good way for, for us to judge length and the general character of the music to where in the program we can put it or not, et cetera. So yeah, uh, in general, Rachel, I would say, uh, think from our point of view. We have hundreds of things that we need to evaluate. Uh, give us as much as you can. Uh, and then, you know, if you have a, a recording and, you know, later, you know, send it back to, to me, uh, you know, as a support material, um, if it's going to make a difference. Okay. Awesome. And then my second question is, if let's say you're submitting a solo uh, uh, submission with multiple entries and different entries fit different categories of the of the pre-existing ideas is it possible to click multiple of those pre-existing recital series um I just... yeah uh, absolutely uh, but you have to remember that we are trying to open the spaces to as many people as we can uh so uh, i think there is that the limit now sometimes you have to 
put people on more than one performance. Uh, but we are, so be careful with that because uh, we might be in a position where we are gonna to have to choose one uh, of the two proposals. Rachel, for clarification, are you talking about like how one pers one piece could be like nature and Latin America, or is it like separate? No, like if if you have one piece that fits into the romantic nature and one piece that's the contemporary nature, but you're you're kind of putting everything you can in. Would you click multiple things just to have that kind of consideration? Yeah. So one, I think one piece, like you can submit one piece per proposal. Does that make sense? So like one piece is counts as one proposal. I think that's right. That's what we decided. You so if you, have, if you want to submit multiple pieces, you'll have to submit multiple times. Are we talking about the predetermined concepts? Yeah, or... yes. the predetermined, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can only have three things all together. So you only get your, your, your actual proposals and then however many of those has to equal three. So if you check one one of the boxes for the pre predetermined, you can have two other proposals. But if you click all three, three of those, then you wouldn't be able to have any proposals. Plus, as Alberto is saying, he wants to have lots, you know, openings for, for a number of people to be in those concerts. So it's something to bear in mind. <clears throat> I have a question. Um, so I, can you hear me? Sorry. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, where's the convention work form? Because I I did the first. I've got the first two steps done, but I'm trying to find the third one. So you said under convention, and then you go to proposals again. Yeah. So let me let me show you. Again. Thank you. Okay. Um. So it's under events. Oh. Okay. And then proposal works. On the home page. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Deborah. Yes, thank you so much. Um, could you please clarify um, as a first time contributor where I would submit the audio file? I'm a little confused on that. Yeah, so it's um, once you submit the initial application, you will get an automatic email. And in that email, I'll show you, in that email, there is a link to our like Dropbox. It's called Box, but it's like Dropbox. So uh, let me share my screen again. Um, let me see. So this is what your email should look like. So it should have your name. Um, and then it says, if you have any supplemental materials, please upload them to Box here. Okay. And so if for whatever reason you do not get this email, it should be automatic. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you don't get it, please email me and I can help you. <laughs> so, or I can send it to you or, yeah. So if you have any questions, if you have any Thank troubles. Thank you so much. And, and often when that's happened, it's because some, because the applicant has put in a different um, email address to the one that the, and, and, Melly did mention this. If you put in a different one to the one that you're expecting to get your message, you can easily miss the the um, the confirmation email. And so that sometimes happens is, is if one person, if more than one person is working on the proposal. So you just have to make sure you put the email address um, where you need to get the information, the confirmation email, so that you can submit the materials. That's really important. Yeah, it might go to your junk mail too. Hopefully yeah, not, but junk. I would absolutely check if your junk folder, because it's a little, you know, especially if you've never submitted before, maybe it will flag it. So, any other questions? I have a question. An inbox, can you submit like a YouTube link or something like that? Yeah. So, um, if you have uh, YouTube links, uh, you can't because it has to be files, but what you can do is, um, what I've been telling people, is you can put the you, the links in like a Word doc or a PDF and just like label it very clearly like what it is, like recordings, um, and um, put the links in there and then upload that document. So it's all in one place. 
And if you have a score that you want to submit. Yeah, if it's a PD, if it's um a PDF, probably, um, then yeah, you can any PDF, MP3, MP4, WAV, all of those things you can upload. Any other questions? I just answered Aaron's oh. question in the chat. Um, but yeah, this is important too. Like if you're, if there's um, a collective, like a group of people who want to submit one, and I'm assuming you have one thematic recital that you have several performers for, you would just submit one proposal and have, so there's like one contact person for the entire recital. But then Alberto may pick out not everything from that recital and that's up to him if he wants to do that or not. Yeah, just just to clarify that, I think generally speaking, um, it is a good idea to take into consideration on your proposal, the possibility that we might have to take it apart. Uh, it is unlikely that we'll have the time for anybody to do a full recital, like in the old good days. Um, I played one full recital one. I don't think it has happened uh, since then. And we're talking about 20 something years ago. It's just because the the amount of people is it's massive and we want to give uh, opportunities to everyone. Uh, so keep that in mind. Even in your proposals, you know, uh, I was just thinking that I, I already have heard people that are saying I can offer a short uh, lecture, like a 40 minutes lecture, or I can do an hour and a half that would include this in addition. Um, I think it's 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 a good idea to offer us a little bit of modular uh, possibilities. Uh, it could be a little bit complicated. I don't know. I don't know really what you think about that, but uh, I think the the the, the uh, application sheet would allow us to do that, right? Yeah, and if you honestly want to talk about the possibility of your your you know exactly like you're saying, Alberto. Um, you might not have room for it like in the actual application, but again, you can upload anything to Box. So all of that will go in a little folder with all of your application for your proposal. So if you have additional, like, if you want to go ahead and like explain, like, I, you know, we could have it, I would like, I have option A or option B, um, you can submit that just like as a PDF, you know. So we're, Alberto and Sarah are going to, in the committee, they're going to go through every single piece of material that you submit. So, and and if we have questions about you know um, how we can use this material in one of the programs, we'll contact you and we'll have a conversation about that. Uh, we of course are trying not to dissect too much everything, but um, it is uh, going back to Aaron's question. Um, yeah, make sure that you know your proposals have. Uh, you know, a little bit of flexibility and I like to call them modular. So we can put them, couple that proposal with another similar one in one program, uh, or we can use a whole time, an hour or an hour and a half, whatever it is. So uh, a lot of the decisions are gonna be based on how many proposals we like and how much space we have, which is, is, a, is a serious consideration. Somebody asked uh, with Jennifer Grimm, said yes, but is it possible for two teachers to apply for a lecture workshop um, or lecture recital? Yes, you can have multiple people. Um, one thing that I didn't mention last year that I'm reminded this year. So um, again, um, I'm gonna emphasize to have all your materials ready before you submit. We had a lot of people like 90 people do submit duplicates. Um, and I can, if you do that accidentally, um, I just let me know and I can delete it for you on my end. I don't think you can delete it on your end. Um, so that makes our my job a little bit easier, um, filtering through all of the duplicates and making sure, sometimes it's hard for me to guess like, which one is the completed one or which one did they mean to actually submit? And I'm like guessing and then I have to email people. And so, um, just make sure that you have all your stuff before you actually apply. Um, but if you do, you know, have technical questions, just email me and I can I can help you because I get I have all that access on my end. So can I add one um uh, begging uh, uh <laughs> thing to this conversation? 
Um, you know, I, I think Jennifer, you mentioned this to me when we discussed uh, this a couple of years back. Uh, please be quick and responsive with your emails. Um, it is surprising to me sometimes. I, I have been, uh, Sarah and I have spent an, an inordinate amount of time writing two and three emails to people sometimes, you know, and we are all busy. But, uh, you know, especially if you, if we are saying, yes, we are interested in what you're doing, can, can you give us more or when is a good time? Be responsive. Uh, it makes a big difference. Remember, you know, you deal with one or two of us, but we deal with hundreds. And so, you know, it makes it makes a big difference in, in getting your project into fruition. Okay. Sarah, is there anything you wanted to mention about, you were saying about recordings as well? You want to mention that? Oh, yeah. Um, for, in terms of like recordings for recital proposals, I think something that will be helpful for us um, are recordings that you can see very clearly. I'm sure this is on the website as well. So I apologize if I'm repeating information for us. Sorry, for us also too, if the piece or the recording that you're sending is within the past like year or has been recorded in the past year, I think that will help us as well, just kind of determine the artistry, the musicianship, um, but especially just like the visual of being able to see clearly will help a lot, I think. Um, but I think everything else, that's good. And Jenny, if you allow me to say one last thing, um, you know, for everybody here, we know we are all fluids. We know that the nature of the, 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 the beast is that we are constantly, sometimes we get invited to do things, sometimes we get rejected. Um, I have to tell you that uh, the convention in Pittsburgh, where we, the flute studio from Carnegie Mellon, proposed, made a proposal, got rejected. None of the Pittsburgh musicians uh, were invited to it. And then there was another one in which uh, the theme was Latin America, and my proposal got rejected as well. <laughs> and so I want you to remember this, because if it happens, first, it's, an, it's not at all. A projection on your quality, your your creativity, your contribution. There are times and times, and sometimes you know we, the people that are trying to make programs, have to compromise, and uh, you know. So please be generous on on your understanding, and uh, when we pick yours, uh, be responsive and helping us to bring your proposal to reality. Okay. Wonderful. Well, uh, thanks so much, Alberto and Jennifer and um, <clears throat> and Sarah and Millie for facilitating such a really wonderful session and for everybody uh, for being here. I've put our uh, contact information here. And if you have technical problems, then Daniel Posabon is our convention director. And um, don't hesitate to contact him if you have um, any questions about the technical requirements or limitations um about uh, anything that you want to propose he's actually traveling on a site visit for a future uh, convention uh, the first part of next week but he'll respond to you when he gets back if you have any technical questions and don't hesitate to contact me and and Melly, um if you have any uh questions at all and we'll be very happy to um to help you move forward and we look forward very much to seeing your proposals Again, this will be, um, this was recorded. We will have this up on the website. So just if you want to go back um, and reference, I think it's probably going to go on our YouTube and the web page. Uh, Noah's going to work on that. Uh, so he'll have that up. Um, and yeah, thank you again, everybody. So if you have any technical questions, feel free to email me. So. And we'll see you in San Antonio. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much. Bye for now.